Okay, is it visible to everyone? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Uh, welcome to my session of networking tools, uh, device and tools on strengthening Asia Connect female network engineer. It's a part of capacity building of NREN, TechGal, and Fusar IT Gal, funded by European Union, Asia Connect. This project is uh, our webinar is hosted by the Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, Kodokali Science and Technology University, Bangladesh. I am Mohammad Mahur Rahman, Assistant Professor of the Department. Let me a brief introduce about myself. I'm the assistant professor department of computer science and engineering. I have completed my BS engineering from the same department and also MS engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Let us uh, start the session, networking tools and devices. First of all, we'll see the course layout, introduction, computer network architecture, Enterprise private network, network topologies, network transmissions, network components like as transmission devices and tools, switching devices and tools, routing devices, security devices, network operating systems, different type of servers and components. After that, medium access control addresses, then the layer task of network arrangement like a transmission control protocol or internet protocol stacks. After that, open system interconnection model for computer networks. First of all, uh, we can know, learn about data communication. As Thank you know, you, it's a- Thank you, sir. Thank you. As you know, data communication, as you know, that computer is a data processing unit. It's a machine that processes data, takes data, process it and makes output. But in modern times, we use computer network to transmit data or information. So transfer of data from one device to another device via some form of transmission medium is called actually data communication. For data communication to occur, the communication devices must be a part of communication system made of a combination of hardware, the physical equipment, and have some softwares. That means uh, the data communication task is uh, actually arranged by uh, some physical and some logical equipment. Physical equipment actually like as uh, different uh, competing devices which are connected to the network and different software. Uh, which is uh, logically process the computations. As you can see the figure here, uh, a person wants to send a message to another person uh, via a transmission line. Hi, how are you? This is the message and transmitted from first person to second person. They encoded this information into the computer and send it to the second person via transmitting signals. As you know about signals, it's a electrical signal that is converted or uh, uh, tra travel over the transmission line or can travel also with wireless media. If we learn about data communication, we can see the some background information like as telecommunication, transmission signal or uh, over the distance but purpose of communication is called telecommunication. In modern times, this process almost always involved the use of electromagnetic waves by transmitter and receiver. But in early years, it was involved the use of drums visual signals like as a smoke, fire, beacons, semaphore lines, 
and other optical communications. Uh, <coughs> as you can see there, somewhere uh, someone wants to uh, send a signal in ancient times, uh, it can fire birds. So the smoke uh, will travel to the sky and the persons or group of people will see the smoke, so will uh, unite them or uh, raise them the destination of fire so that they can uh, uh, know the information about uh, that phenomenon. After that, the carrier by pigeon, pigeon and then Morse code. Morse code is a method used in telecommunication to encode text character as a standardized sequence of two different signal duration called dot and dashes or dit and des. Morse code is named after the Samuel Morse, one of the inventor of telegraphs. The history of communication technology have involved a tandem with shift in political and economical systems and by extensions, system of powers. Communication can range from very subtle process of exchange to full conversation and mass communication. As you can see, the evolution of communication systems or data communications are here. First of all, the is radio signal, wireless radio, then telephone, after that facsimile or fax, then come into the mobile phone, then invented the internet, and after that we can communicate via different forms, one of these like emailing or electronic mailing system. If we see the historical timeline, visual auditory and ancillary method non electrical method actually prehistorical method uses fire beacons smoke and communication drums or phones 16th century bc uses mail 15th century bc pigeon post 4th century bc hydraulic semaphores 15th century maritime flux of semaphores 1672 uses first experimental acoustic or mechanical telephone, 1790, semaphore lines, optical telegraphs, 1867 uses signal lamps, 1877 uses phonographs, and 90s uses optical pictures. But if you can see the electrical uh, signal or electrical based system, uh, that was the ancestor of the modern communication systems in 1832 to 1880 electrical telegraphs and advanced electrical and electronic signals are uses in 1950 semiconductor era begins in 1964 fiber optic communications in 1967 computer networking starts 1974 invented internet in 1981 first mobile cellular phone network are invented. In 1982, simple mail transport protocol are invented. In 1992, 2003, rise of global internet by inventing web one. And 2004 to present, we can use web two, global ubiquitous communication, social medias, video conferencing, and different types of modern communication system uh, like as instant messaging or other things to communicate is with other. So in modern times, uh, we can uh, communicate uh, to others uh, in efficient and easy way. If you can see the components of communication systems, there are five component involved here. One is the message which we have to transmit from a person to another person. There must be a sender and a receiver, and the transmission medium and protocol by which we can, uh, by which uh, we can from this communication system. So when a sender wants to send a message, uh, he will encode his message by a devices. The devices is called uh, terminal devices or nodes. 
he will input his information uh, or input his information to that devices and that devices must have the connection to the receiving devices uh, by a medium that is called transmission medium. There must be a two types of transmission medium that we will see it in future slides. One is guided medium and another is non-guided medium or wireless medium. So medium is used to transmit it, uh, transmit information from sender to receiver. And the receiver is one who will receive the matches the protocol protocol is used to form the communications it's actually rules and regulations by which we can uh, when the communication will form uh, the protocol will uh, uh, maintain uh, the ensurity of messages security of messages integrity of messages and like as uh, other formalities uh, to reach the message to the receiver uh, uh, in easy manner. The effectiveness of data communication system depend upon the four fundamental characteristics. Delivery. The system must deliver data to the correct destination. Data must be received by the intended devices or user and only by the device or the user. It must be accuracy. The system must deliver data accurately. Data that have been altered in transmission and left uncorrected are unusable. Actually, uh, that means correctness of data. Data must be say, received by the receiver uh, in intact way. Timeliness, system must be delivered data in timely manner. That means I am sending something to, uh, some, to someone. It must be raised on time. Jitter, it's referred to the variation of packet when the data sent it by the sender uh, to the receiver. It must be divided into some packets that is maintained by uh, communication protocol. The packet, uh, it, uh, when a large amount of data are sent uh, from sender to the destination, uh, they're from the anonymous number of packets and the packet are sent it serial or non-serial manner, but the arrival rate time of the packet have uh, some uh, time limits or arrival time limits or variation of time limits. This is called the jitter actually. Computer network. Network is actually arrangement of devices that can communicate with each, each other. As we referred that the, that the sender will send the information to the receiver, but in modern times, humans send information via computer or other computing devices. So that computer network is refers as uh, mostly we use computers. So computer network refers to the interconnected computing device that can exchange data, shared resources to each other. Uh, in the figure, we can see that uh, the there is a communication or computer networking model here. Uh, what is a router connected to some PCs, some mobile devices, laptops, iPads, uh, other devices, and connected to global networks or internet. In modern, uh, it's a physical infrastructure actually by which the devices are connected to each other. But in modern computer can be also operate virtually. Uh, it can integrate on larger scale and respond quickly to change the condition, provide data security. As we mentioned previously that computer are used 
to transmit data. Uh, in modern times, we use our valuable information or data. Uh, we exchange the data or we send the data via computer network, like as different financial transactions in banking uh, and other research information, personal informations, uh, which are very valuable to us that we send it via computer network and internet. So providing security is also an issue and computer network uh, is also used to uh, maintain the data security via different cryptographic techniques uh, and other type of security basis. As we previously mentioned that uh, a network actually, when you see the network, the computer and other computing devices, uh, these are used to make a network uh, or make the arrangement of network is called node and the communication lines or transmission mediums via which the computer or other communicating devices are connected is with other is called links. So node is the computing devices or computer like devices and links are the communication uh, mediums uh, between them. So node and links are the new terms uh, are terms used to or refer the computing networks. So node and links are the basic building blocks of computer network. So network node may be the data communication equipments such as modem, hub, switches, or data terminal equipments such as two or more computers, printers, etc. Nodes follow a set of rules or protocols that define how to send and receive electronic data via the links. The computer network architecture defines the design of this physical and logical components. The advantage of computer network, via computer network, we can send the information from a sender to receiver as the data move electronically near about the speed of light so that we can send an enormous amount of information from one part of the world to another part of the world via computer network very easy. So as of accessibility, it have the flexibilities, convenient of sharing resources. We can send an enormous amount of information. We can share it secretly. We can make secret communications uh, in convenient way. There are connectivity and it will maintain security, great storage capacity like as different cloud storage. We can store all of our information to the uh, network clouds or cloud cloud server so that uh, there have a uh, some uh, that have a limited risk of uh, losing that information and it also uh, reduce the cost of uh, communications there is a model of computer network computer network architecture Computer network design fall under two broad categories. One is client server architecture and another is peer to peer architecture. So in client server architecture, node may be servers or clients. That means there are two types of nodes or communicating devices. One is called server and another groups are called clients. Server nodes provide the resources like as memory, processing powers, or data to the client nodes and manages client nodes behavior. 
in client server model client are connected to the server and client are requested to the server to provide some services and server will manage the services and it serve the client suppose if someone want to search information by google we simply type google.com then we can write something by which we want to search uh, in the internet so google server will so i am the client i am accessing the google website writing something to the prompt of google search bar then pressing search after that the google server will search the information according to my keywords to the internet so me here as a role of client and the google will google server or server nodes will act as a server so this is basically client server model of computing so client node is to communicate with uh, communicate with each other but they don't share resources may access this data by making a request to the server machine in peer to peer architecture connected computer have equal power and privileges there is no central server for coordination like as client server model client server model is actually centralized architecture but the in peer to peer model it's a distributed architecture actually there is no central server for coordination is devices in the computer network can act as either client or server is peer may share some of its resources with the enter computer network enterprise private network in internal according to the size of the network actually we can divide it our uh, computer network into different categories like a uh, local area network metropolitan area network personal area network or wide area network and that networks are also called the enterprise private network the internal network of an organizations or outside of an organizations included the physical and requirement that may have many common types of enterprise private networks local area networks metropolitan area networks wide area networks and personal area networks first of all the local area networks when we want to make a network on a small office building or within a floor or a computer lab we can use the local area network an interconnected system limited in size and geography typically connects computer and devices within a single office building or single office used to transmit data at higher speed within the close proximity in the figure we can see a hub so it's connected to a limited number of computers uh, with the server here that have incoming connection from server and this hub or switch maintain the connection with a limited uh, area like as a single office or laboratory this is called local area networks the metropolitan area networks the network extended over an entire city city to uh, within an entire city like as uh, the cable tv network uh, where the network are spreaded uh, 
uh, within a city or within a metropolitan area or some local isp networks are also in the type of metropolitan area networks its size the, the size of metropolitan area networks is larger than the local area networks the personal area networks it's actually when we use different type of devices uh, we can maintain or we can make a network personally to connect different devices uh, within a limited distance and devices can transmit data to another devices in ad hoc manner that type of networks are called personal area networks when someone wants to share some information uh, to another via bluetooth or via uh, different uh, cell phones personal hotspot tethering that that type of networks are called the personal area networks a computer network or uh, or interconnecting electronics devices within individual personal workspace that is connected uh, that is used to connect headphones laptops mobile phones uh, printers mouse and other types of devices within limited distances the data communication speed in personal area networks uh, is also limited but it is very useful when uh, to communicate or working in group working in a meeting then we can share our information to uh, others computer or other person within a meeting is very easier to use uh, when we use personal net area network or pan the wide area network it's actually enterprise network spanning buildings cities or even countries set up for long distance communication that is secure and dependable it's a network from city to city country to country and connected thousands of local area networks or metropolitan area networks it's called wide area networks that is that transmitted data over long range or long distance communication service providers or network service providers is actually uh, will uh, an organization by which we can access the internet uh, it's called actually service provider of networks or uh, we can get a connection from them allow the customer to leverage network capacity and functionalities from the providers network service providers may consist of telecommunications companies data carriers wireless communication providers internet service providers and cable television television operators etc they are offering high speed internet access simply we can see that uh, by these organizations we are buying internet or network connections is called the service network service providers the isp or internet service provider is an example of network service providers isp will get a connections from national isp or can get connection from internet gateways then it will provide a connection to its subscribers cloud networks it's a modern terms by which uh, we can use as uh, we can use the cloud infrastructure uh, to share resources it cloud will provide uh, cloud is providing the infrastructure as a service 
application as a service, platform as a service, and uh, as, you, as you can see it simply, an infrastructure delivered by cloud that the capacity or resources are hosted in public or private platforms in the internet. We can hire the, uh, we can buy or we can subscribe the services from internet, uh, the cloud infrastructures to use them. Uh, cloud infrastructure in modern times will provide uh, the, uh, the data security uh, or other things like as net, uh, the network resources, like as virtual routers, firewalls, network bandwidths, network management softwares, and other tools and functions. In cloud infrastructure, there are, may have private uh, cloud and public cloud and also have hybrid computing model. We can get the storage services, application services, database services or server infrastructure. Internet networks, two or more networks connected to become an internet network so or internet. Actually internet is the connection, is the combination of thousand of networks. It's called the network of all networks. When all networks are connected uh, each with other, then it's called internet. It's the last largest internet network. That means network of networks in the world. Here you can see the three networks are here are connected by some gateway to form internet. Let us see the term network topology. Network topology are the arrangement of nodes and links is called network topologies. There are many types of arrangements like it, uh, bus topology, ring topology, star topology, mesh topology, and hybrid topology. So let us see the, about the types of the topology, bus topology here. In the figure, we can see that the common bus topology, is node is linked to one other node only. That a transmission over the network connection occurs in one direction only. Here you can see a single bus. The incoming connections to each node or competing devices are get from that single bus or single lines. So in here, the data connections or data communications are performed here in on directions. If somehow this cable is cut off, all the descended computers are, will disconnected by it. So this is the most disadvantages of common bus topology problem. The second category is a ring topology. In ring topology, a circular way of connections of devices. That means the common line will be a circular line and the nodes or computing devices will get the connection from that circular line. So each node is linked to two other nodes forming a ring. Data can flow bidirectionally However, single node failure can bring down the internet. So if this line is cut off, this computer is also able to communicate via this line. This is much beneficiary than the bus topology. Now you can see the extra topology. It's an it's the 
its star topology a central server node is linked to a multiple client network devices this topology performs better as data does not have to go through this node it's more reliable in mesh topology this is the figure of mesh topology this is the figure of mesh topology every node is connected to many other nodes every node is connected to every other nodes in the network so each node have uh, the connection with all other nodes there are partial mesh or fully connected mesh networks in hybrid topology combines two or more standalone topology in here the connections forms via ring and mesh this is the network topologies okay network transmission or transmission modes when two devices are connected together and communicate with each other there have some mode of transmissions three types of mode actually simplex half duplex and full duplex communication modes in simplex mode unidirectional as one way spread only one of the two devices on a link can transmit the other can only receive so in simplex mode a mainframe to monitor is actually a simplex mode or if you can see the cable television from the television stations that are transmitted over satellite or other terrestrial signals then the television on the house i uh, can see only the transmitted programs via televisions this is the direction of data it's unidirectional or simplex mode of data communications only one of the two devices can link the transmit the other can also on the receive for example keyboard traditional monitors are like that in half duplex communications data can be transmitted from sender to receiver in two direction but at a time in one direction that means when the sender and to send data to the, to the receiver the sender will wait for listening when the listening is completed then it will be able to send the data to the other nodes okay so direction of data at time 1 and direction of data of time 2 so in half duplex communication is like as walkie talkie we can send data from both direction but at a time in one direction so each station can both transmit and receive but now at the same time in one okay when one device is sending other device can only receive and vice versa in full duplex communications both sender and receiver can send and get, receive data simultaneously like as our telephone or mobile networks or modern internet networks we can both send and receive data simultaneously from both directions both stations can transmit and receive simultaneously signal going on on directions share the capacity of the links with signal going to the another directions it's for example telephone networks or mobile networks 
transmission devices network transmission devices uses to share data and data resources via transmission media connect individual pc workstations servers into a lan or local area networks network transmission works by using a packet routing network that follows internet protocol or ip and transmission control protocol or tcp that is two useful protocol and after that they are used to uh, transmit data so network transmission devices will generate data or receive data and network transmissions are occurred by different uh, are arranged by different protocols and they uses different infrastructure uh, to uh, maintain the whole processes so as from the earlier slides we saw that the uh, we uh, the term transmission media or transmission medium the types of network transmission media media is actually by which we can uh, send the signals that have infrastructure or infrastructure based system uh, uses different types of cables to transmit signals via them or uses different wireless signals by which uh, we, call, we can call the unguided transmission media the guided mediums the waves are guided along the physical path as like as the our electricity uh, are, comes from electrical lines to our houses so we can use this different internet cable lines uh, to transmit our data from server to clients or isp to clients or the networks to our homes or different office buildings that type of physical paths are included different twisted pair cables coaxial cables fiber optic cables are like that the unguided transmission mediums are transmitted electromagnetic wave without using any physical medium it's like as our mobile phone communicate to the near cellular stations uh, via wireless signals so like that we can use this uh, bluetooth that can uh, use in personal communication uh, to send data in short distances is also a wireless communications we can use this microwaves radio waves infrared signals and other wireless signals to transmit our information without media or it's called unguided transmission medium like as i triple h 2.11 is commonly used in wi-fi routers and other transmission devices ethernet i triple h 2.3 has been used in many years provides the wire connectivity for many data networking applications from home to largest enterprise systems consists of two main elements actually interconnected media like a coaxial to state pair cables fiber optic cables etc and network nodes like as computers routers switches hubs and miscellaneous devices that arranges the communication paths actually <coughs> at 2.3 ethernet network are uh, uses uh, different physical communication medium to transmit data but now wireless lan are also used okay so in ethernet connection we can see a ethernet port here and a, with a RJ45 connector 
RJ45 connectors by which we can connect a twisted pair cable here to the Ethernet port. So in Ethernet port, this is the schematic diagram of Ethernet port. There is a activity led flashes when the network data is being transmitted through the port. This is led that will flashes. Okay. Linklet lights when the unit is connected to the network. This is the connection status. We can read the connection status by this light. Okay. So in Ethernet port, there are different pins. First pin is left pin is not in use, not in use. It will receive not in use, not in use, receiver transmission and transmission. So two right side pin are used to transmit information and the third pin from the right and the third pin from the left are used to receive information. Two middle pins are not used and two left pins are left not used. As we saw that the different cables are used in Ethernet network are coaxial twisted pair or fiber optic cables. We can see that the coaxial or coax cables, a types of electrical cable consist of inner conductors, consist of an inner conductors surrounded by a concentric conducting shield with the two separated by the dielectric. This is the metallic conducting shield and this is the inner conductor are insulated by dielectric insulator. And after that, a plastic jacket, this is a hard jacket that is used to uh, protect the metallic shield, dielectric insulators and inner conductor from environmental effects, damages and others. But it's not, uh, it's also flexible that we can uh, move this cable or uh, we can get this cable from narrow paths. So many coaxial cables have, cables also have a protective outer shield or pulse jacket, uses the transmission light for radio frequency signal, greater bandwidth and compared to twisted pair cables. Connecting tools for <coughs> coaxial cables are coax cable tester, installation kit, cable striper that is used to cut the cables, crimper, and compression connector. We can see a available video to the how to connect. There is a short video for you. Hi everyone and welcome back to another ANC How To. Today we will be showing you how to use two types of coax cable joiners, the screw connector and the F-type female. If your existing coax cable is too short, you can use either of these joiners to lengthen it. These joiners work for RG15. and RG6 coax cables. We recommend the metal F-type joiner for a more secure connection. You will need your existing coax cable, one of the joiners, a screwdriver, a coax stripping tool, and another coax cable. Firstly, we will show you how to use the plastic screw joiner. 
you will need to use two non-terminated coax cables like these. Use the coax stripping tool to expose the copper core conductor like so. Unscrew the plastic joiner to remove the inner capsule. Place the plastic casing over the non-terminated coax cable. Then loosen both Phillips screws with a screwdriver. and insert the existing coax cable into one side side of the capsule. Ensure the copper reaches halfway into the capsule. Secure the copper in place by re-tightening the screws. Repeat this on the other side with the new coax cable. Now, screw the two plastic joiner halves together. Now we will show you how to use the metal F-type joiners. To use this joiner, you will need two F-type terminated coax cables. You can use either a compression, twist on, or a crimp style cable like this. First screw either coax cable to one side of the joiner. Repeat with the other coax cable on the other side. If you would like to use these joiners outdoors, you may need to water seal the connection using self-fusing tape. Using the tape, wrap around multiple times, leaving none of the joiner exposed. Now, Leave it for at least 24 hours to allow the tape to fuse and seal. For any further questions or assistance, visit our website or refer to the contact numbers at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi everyone and welcome back to another ANSIC How To. Today we will be showing you how to use two types of coax cable joiners. Okay, thanks for watching. The twisted pair cable is another type of cable that is used to two conductor of a single circuit that are twisted together for the purpose of improving electromagnetic compatibility. The pairs of twisted to provide the protection against crosstalk the noise generated by the adjacent pairs. When some electrical signal are moved through the straight line, they will make some coupling of electrical electromagnetic waves and uh, make some electrical field. So when you twist it two pairs in together, it will get the protection against crosstalk, it will not couple to the next twists. So in twisted pair, it's a sheep cable compared to the coaxial cable, but the band and the bandwidth is limited. There is two types of twisted pair cables. One is unsealed twisted pair and another is shield twisted pair. In shield twisted pair, there is metallic foil which, by which we can wrap this twisted pairs. So it's called shield twisted pair. It provides an extra protections of that cable. Uh, it's used to networking in sensitive data communications like in, in airplanes or other areas where cross or coupling signals become a problem. 
an unshield twisted pair is actually used in uh, anywhere like it's outdoor communications or where there have no risks. In twisted pair cables, the RJ45 or registered jack 45 connector is used almost universally as a physical connector used in Ethernet cables and with networking cables in general. This is RJ45 connectors. As you can see that in RJ45 connectors, there have eight pins. And from the twisted pair cable, there have four pairs. All the four pairs have different colors of that cable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the pin of RJ45. First of all, our first point will insert the white green. Second one will insert the green. Third one will insert the white orange. Fourth one will blue. Fifth one will white blue. Sixth will receive the orange. Seventh will white brown. And eight will be brown. So this is the connection of RJ45 from twisted pair cable. This all these are that eight colors that have eight cables are twisted in four pairs. If we want to connect the twisted pairs or this cable to the RJ45 connector, we'll use these manners. As you, if we hold this RJ45 in our left hand, we can see here the insertion points to that pin. There have eight ports by which we can insert the cables in that serial or in that manner. This is the Ethernet connections by a twisted pair and RJ45 connectors. Okay. To create a network, Ethernet cable, or you need to the equipment listed below, category three, category five, category five E, six or seven, cat seven cables, RJ45 connectors, crimping tools. To create network cable, you need to crimp or cut that is capable of crimping a RJ45 cable. Not only, RJ11 cable, which looks similar to RJ45, wire striker or knives, cable tester, option but optional but recommended. We can see that this is the crimping tools. You can see the a short video here, how to connect with twisted pair cables by RJ45 connectors. Hey guys, all right, today we're gonna crimp an ethernet cable. So first what you wanna do is you wanna remove the sheathing on the wire using the little handy dandy wire stripper. Pull that sheathing off, it's gonna expose the twisted pairs. It's gonna take a few minutes to separate each pair and then go ahead and untwist them and get all the wires nice and organized. Now, once you get them organized, uh, there's a specific sequence in which they need to go in. You'll see the diagram come up on the right hand side of your screen momentarily. Boom, there you go. All right, here comes the diagram. Excellent. All right, so now what you want to do is grab your FD500R crimping tool and you want to cut off some of the excess wire because we don't need that much to go inside the connector. All right, grab one of your connectors and you want to funnel those wires inside, maintaining that specific color sequence, just like that. I like to 
insert mine a little bit more, make sure that some of the uh, sheathing gets in there a little bit, makes, makes it nice and clean. Okay, so next you want to grab the FD500R tool and you want to insert the connector into the top right slot. It clips in kind of like you'd clip it into a wall jack. All right, get that clipped inside. You'll hear, you'll hear a little uh, click. Once you do that, you just want to squeeze the crimping tool closed. There we go. All right, now make sure you just go ahead and unclip it from the tool. And there you have it. Good to go. And Ethernet cable. Nicely crimped. Everything's available at www.ferrellsdirect.com. Check the links below. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll also share these documents to you, our videos, so that you'll, you can get it into practical in future. Ethernet cables performance safari. If you want to make a network, or you can use Ethernet cables for your office, our buildings, then we can use <coughs> different types of Ethernet cables, like as Cat 3 on shield have maximum speed of 10 Mbps and maximum bandwidth is 16 megahertz. As you know that the hertz is the cycle per seconds with the unit of signals transmitted from source to the destinations and maximum transmission speed at 100 meters is measured for cat 3. cat 5 is unshield 10 by 100 mbps 100 megahertz cat 5b unshield 1000 mbps or 1 gbps 100 megahertz speed Cat 6, shield or unshield, 1 Gbps, greater than 250 MHz. Cat 6A, shield, 10,000 or 10 Gbps, 500 MHz. Cat 7, shielded, 10 Gbps, 600 MHz. Cat 8, shield, 25 Gbps or 40 Gbps for some special cables with maximum bandwidth of 2000 megahertz. This is different type of cables, mostly for general purpose connections. We can use CAT5 or CAT5E cables, but in a special purpose like this the server infrastructures and other long distance, large area network formation, we can use this uh, CAT6, 6A7 or 8 connections. A standalone carbon are more flexible and it is more applicable for ethernet cables where the cables may be moved using DEX or general connection to the PCs, but solid cable is not as flexible as the standalone type, but it's also more durable using permanent installation, cable like as installation under floor, embedded in wall and other likes. After that, the optical fiber cables, optical fiber, fiber optics are Optical fiber refers the technology that transmit information as light paths. Information are encoded into light, transmitted over the glass medium, and decoded into the data from the or electronic data from that light. 
a flexible transparent fiber made by drawing glasses silicas or plastics to the diameter slightly thicker than that of human hair, hair. mostly most of the fiber optic cables or the main things is called core is thinner like human ear types of optical fiber is multi-mode fibers capable of carrying multiple lights press at the same time as it has varying optical properties at core the single mode fiber a much smaller core size most fiber internet providers offer speeds up to 100 gbps by using optical fiber as their transmission medium the working principle of optical fiber is the is, is the knowledge from knowledge drawn from the basic physics optical fiber works on the principle totally uses to, total internal reflections when like traveling the optically dense medium to the is to the lower dense medium like as from water to air the incident angle this is the incident angle and this is the refracted angle to the air, air or lower dense medium so when the critical angle uh, incident angle is larger than the critical angle the light is completely reflected to the first media this is called total internal reflections as we can see the in desert there is water but there is no water as like that's uh, in internal the optical fiber cable uses total internal reflection as its uh, physical properties uh, to travel light from one destination to another destination so here is an example of uh, optical fiber cables light ray are coming from a source it travel from one destination or one part of cable to another part of by using total uh, totally internal reflections this is the core uses the glass like materials and it is uh, enclosed by a cladding and after that a plastic coated jackets are there this is actually core glass core then cladding coating strengthening members and outer jackets the most common use the connectors are to stsc fc mtrj lc connectors while plastic foc and optical jacks lx5 volitions mu and e2000 are best used in the options finally mp or mt connectors are fiber connectors which have been become widely used in today's data centers for high speed efficient cabling systems optical fiber cables fiber to home the installation and use of optical fiber from central point directly to individuals building to provide high speed internet access also called fiber to the premises FTTP a single fiber can be split into many branches to support multiple end users by using splitter most of the ISP providers using optical fiber terminals joint boxes plastics are here one cable may connect here in this port and the that connection is split into many connections are here. fiber optic media converter converting copper to fiber converting between different fiber types designed for dynamic networks 
optical network unit. So converting copper to fiber, that means when some part of networks are uses fiber optic uh, twisted pair coaxial cables for communicating and when we can make an interface from uh, copper medium like a uh, fiber uh, twisted pair coaxial cable and then uh, for to uh, want to transmit data over the fiber optic cable then we can use this copper to fiber converters the optical network unit ONU provides the gigabyte Ethernet service like as 1G, 10G, 2.5G, 14G, and 100G. Small form of form factor plugin or SFP, a compact hot plug network interface module. A, an SFP interface on networking hardware is a modular slot for a media specific transceivers just to connect your fiber optic cables or sometimes a copper cables the figure here is the connections fiber optic terminal tools are ensuring the proper termination of work of fiber optic cables is carried out Direct transmission tools and accessories, clever cutter, round clever striper, polishing products, splicing machines, clearness of wipes, epoxy products, test equipments, optical time domain reflectometers, and TC power supply and adapters. That is the complete toolbox that is used to uh, cut, join, or forming the networks by optical fiber cables. We can use that type of devices by which we can cut cables, we can join, we can polish optical cables, and we can test the cable whether it's working or not. Now this is the end of the session for today. There's a session for asking questions. So, yeah, uh, students, uh, you can ask questions here. Uh, just uh, press the handed button if you want to uh, ask any questions, or you can write the question answer box. Uh, So Tasnish Rahman, your uh, microphone, uh, just unmute your microphone, then ask question. Uh, 